What's up guys, Visual here, but you can call me James, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how you can customise your Photoshop. So guys, before I do go on to show you how to customise your Photoshop, I'm going to be showing you the brand new products on my Selfie page. If you aren't interested in these, then please go ahead and skip the video. But if you are an upcoming graphic designer, or you just want to improve your graphic design work, then be sure to just watch this part of the video. It's going to be really, really short, and then I'll actually explain it. But I will have a time on screen right now if you are wanting to skip onto the video and just only know that. But like I said, this is really important. Anyways, quickly going into it, as you can see on my brand new Selfie page, uh, which is selfie.com forward slash visual jd if you didn't know already the first thing i have is my inferno pack this has been out for quite a while now but it's actually 40 percent off this deal is going to end on monday so i definitely recommend you pick it up while you can as you can see it's normally 6.99 and it's only 4.19 so i definitely recommend you pick that up for a 40% off discount. If you do want to see everything in the Inferno pack, I'll leave a link in the description down below to the video where I showcase everything that is in the pack and it's a really long video, so I definitely recommend you check that out if you are wanting to purchase it. Anyways, the next brand new product here I have is my pre-made revamp template PSD. But as you can see, um, it is a PSD template pack which you get a uh, YouTube banner, a Twitter header, and also an avatar, which you can use for both YouTube and also Twitter. Anyways, as you can see here, it works for pretty much any color. Here at the top, I have yellow, then blue, and then pink, but you can use uh, the hue and saturation bar to actually change the color of this. And like I said, it is fully editable, so you can just literally grab your text tool, click on the text, and change the text. It's as simple as that. It is currently £4.50, but I do believe this is quite a good price compared to actually purchasing a design from me or another designer because you can easily edit the template yourself. For all of these self five products, there is information at the bottom. If you would like to read that, then I definitely recommend you do so. Like I said, you can read that and then purchase the product. So the next thing here I have is an editable YouTube thumbnail PSD template. So pretty much what you get with this is one PSD file and in this PSD file it's completely editable. So you can change the background, you can change the text and you can also change the color and if you even want to change around with the stocks and things like that then you can do so. Personally in my opinion channels look really good if they have uh, almost matching thumbnails for all of their videos. I know people like FaZe Carl does this and a lot of YouTubers really but if you would like to purchase this thumbnail template I definitely recommend you do so. It's so much cheaper than purchasing your Yourself a thumbnail designer or even just purchasing one thumbnail of one single designer. Anyways, the next product here I have is six editable header PSDs. So pretty much this is just six PSD files which you can edit yourself. So pretty much you can use these for client work, whatever you want. You do get the rights of the header once you do purchase it. I just recommend you do somehow give me credit if you can. There's information about the pack here and uh, yeah, it's pretty simple. You get six headers which you can edit all of the text and the first one here you can edit this logo and uh, yeah like I said the text here is editable the uh, extra text that's on the headers as well is editable and also the social media icons and the last and final pack here I have is personally my favorite one this is my 3d text Lightroom pack so uh, this is £2.99 I'll click on it so you can see pretty much you get a cinema 4d file and also a Photoshop file in with this pack once you do purchase it. I do explain it here, but this is the Lightroom that I used for my uh, Phase Nikon 3D text. I know a lot of people do actually wonder how I made that. That's with this Lightroom. So if you want to make text like the one on screen right now, and also like all of my 3D uh, headers actually, then I do definitely recommend you purchase this. It's as simple as loading up the document, selecting the text, changing the text, and then adding your texture. As you can see, I have loads of textures here. And then once you put it into Photoshop, I recommend you put one of these layer styles on that I do include in the pack. Anyways, that is the 3D Cinema 4D Lightroom, and that is pretty much all of the brand new packs that I do have on my Selfie, if you would like to check them out. Anyways, that is it for that. This video isn't going to be too long. Um, well, I don't want to make it too long. Obviously, it will have that bit at the start, but the actual customization for your Photoshop isn't going to take you too long. Anyways, the first thing I have here is you can actually move parts around it in Photoshop. I know this sounds really self-explanatory, but you can actually uh, move this over here if you want. I know a lot of designers move the tools over to this side because you can actually work with your layers while you have this over here. 
Personally, I keep it next to the ruler here. And um, yeah, like I said, you can literally drag stuff. You can move it over here. It is really up to you. Like Photoshop, you have to customize it so it works best for you. Personally, I use the characters a lot, so I do have my characters up here at the top. And then I keep a lot of room for my layers because I work with quite big files and quite a lot of layers, so that's why I do have a massive layer part here. I know a lot of people also ask me why my Photoshop looks like this, almost like it's got a skin on it. It's just the CC version 2015. I haven't updated it since just because I don't see the need of updates, but I really like this version of Photoshop. It does look really good. And you may notice one change I have at the moment, and this is the darker background. I'm actually gonna show you how you can do this now. So yeah, once you have finished messing around with the window, if you want to copy my window settings here, I have layers and paragraph and also a character normally selected as you see here on the right hand side. But yeah, I'm gonna show you how to actually get this dark background. So all you have to do is go to edit, go all the way to the bottom, select preferences, and then after that select interface and this will open up the color theme appearance of your Photoshop. So at the moment I have it on the darkest level. This is the one I normally use. You may notice this one and then this is the one I believe they used in CS5 and then this is a really light one. I personally really hate this one but as you can see the dark one is a bit easier on your eyes when you are working in Photoshop. I do prefer it. I don't know what you guys think because I obviously always use this one so if I did change to this color theme a lot of you may complain but let me know if you do prefer the dark one and if you do then I would definitely be sure to use that because it does look a whole lot better in my opinion. Anyways the next customization here we have if you go into the performance tab here on the left hand side you will get a memory usage uh, option. Personally I let Photoshop use 7525 megabytes which is 70% of my RAM. This is because I use Photoshop all the time. If you wanna even increase this more, then I definitely recommend you do so if you're really only using Photoshop on your computer. But if you are playing games and stuff, then I definitely recommend you turn this down. The reason I have it so high is because all I do really is Photoshop. That's why I let it use all of my RAM pretty much, well, 70% of it. And then here on the graphics processor settings, if you do have a good graphics card, I definitely recommend you select the use graphics processor option. It will help you with your Photoshop and also run faster. And another thing I know I get a lot of questions asked about is how I can also step back really quickly and how I can step back a lot of layers. So if you wanna increase your history states, then um, you can do so. What it will do is pretty much let you uh, edit step back as many times as it says here. So mine is 50, so I can edit and step back 50 times, uh, which is almost half as you can see here. But if you wanna lower that down, it will also let you use less RAM as you see here, it's gone down to 69%, but I'm going to keep it at 50 just because personally, I like the option of being able to edit and step back if I do mess up with something. So that is it for this section. Like I said, if you do want to mess around in this bit, then you can do so. It's really not much customization. It's just like changing the color of the guidelines and things like that. And then once you are done, then make sure to hit OK. So the next thing I'm going to show you guys is keyboard shortcuts. If you select edit at the top and then select keyboard shortcuts, it will open up the menu. So the only main one I use is, as you can see, if I go into file new, I don't have a file new one. So all I have to do if I want to go and make a new file, I select file new. Um, I don't see the need of this shortcut. And then I actually swapped it out for edit step back. I did this ages ago just to test out the shortcuts and I got used to it and I really couldn't get off it. So control N is my shortcut to step back. It's a really quick way of stepping back. The difference between step back and undo is undo you can only actually do once, but step back you can do as many times as you want. So I never really press control Z. I always press control N because it's so much faster. And I can also, like I said, I can step back as many times as I want. That is really the only keyboard shortcuts I use, but you can open these up and you can make shortcuts for them. If you want a shortcut, are making 3D text and you can do so if you want a shortcut making uh, anything really you can do it in this menu personally I just don't really mess around with any of these shortcuts have never really bothered me in Photoshop but once you do get used to a shortcut it will certainly help you and just make you design a whole lot quicker anyways that is it for the customization you can't like I said you can't do too much in Photoshop other than change the color of the uh, actual appearance itself 
and also just mess around with the interface like I said just going to window selecting different things seeing if they work well like I said only select the ones that you use a lot anyways guys that is it for the video I'm gonna cut it off here it's probably really long because of that really really long intro but yeah like I said hopefully you did enjoy if you did make sure to leave a like I really would appreciate it this has been visual or James and I'm out